This is an amazing place. You get the view of the ocean there, completely endless. And then, if you look over here, you get a view of that iconic mountain with the city in the bottom. And to think we were about to skip out on this place because at the very bottom of this trail, there are a bunch of signs that said no automobiles. And it was like in technical Korean and I'm not that great at Korean so I thought that included motorcycles too. But we saw like a car go in and we asked him, hey, can motorcycles go in too? And he said, yeah. So we came up and we saw three other motorcycles and thank God we didn't miss out on this place because it's amazing. You need to come up here. Mount Sambangsan. A dollar happiness right now. Look, it's, it's shaped like a watermelon. It even has seeds. Oh. Oh. I don't know what tastes like. Tastes exactly like watermelon. I don't know. The Hanzo Sea Dance. Fisherman's Dance. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Bang. That's so original. <laughs> so now we are on our way to that mountain right there, but we came across this little pier. And I can't believe how picturesque it just keeps getting in Jeju-do. It just gets better and better and better. And I wish we had so much more time here, but check this out. So this right here is Sambangsan. You actually even got a bus stop right next to it. And if you walk behind the entrance to Yongmori Han, which means Dragon Head Coast, it's over there. So being that we have limited time since the sun seems to be setting, and it's 5 o'clock, so we got about an hour of light for shooting left. I'm gonna first jaywalk here. And we are going to check out this Sambangsan place, which for some reason what I notice in Korea is that the Buddhists have claimed all the best mountains. <laughs> so Mayu was just bitching about how they have their shirts off. And how that's disrespectful. <laughs> They're teenagers, babe. Well, if this was in Thailand, they'd get deported. Yeah. All right, so as far as pricing goes, it's a dollar to go to the top of Sambangsan, but it's another two dollars to see the Dragon Head Coast. But if you get a combined ticket here, you get a 50 cent discount, and it's only two dollars 50 cents. Now, if you do come in a group of 10 or more, you can get a group ticket and it's gonna be about 70 cents for each of you. What we did though was we only got the $1 Sambangsan entrance ticket because I was asking her and she said, it's gonna roughly take you about 30 minutes to climb Sambangsan, another 30 to 40 minutes to do the Dragon Head Coast. Yeah. And right now it's about 5, 10. Sunset's around 6 o'clock. And I'm just gonna cut my losses and just do Sambangsan because 
we've seen so many coasts, we're like, well, why would we want to see another one? I'm sure it's going to be good though, because that's the only UNESCO coast that's up here. But I just have a feeling that this mountain is going to give us an awesome view. So we're going to climb this. And if we do have time, what's another 50 cents? We'll try to make it down there. Okay. I can already tell you, if you are going to do this route that we did, first of all, I don't recommend it because it's way too many sites in one day. But if you are, I would come here like early in the morning, like maybe 5 a.m. And then climb this place up for sunrise and then go and see that viewpoint on the far west coast for sunset. If you have enough time, hit up the Innisfree house and the Osaluk tea place on the way back. One thing I will say though is this place sort of reminds me of Tiger Cave Temple and the Moa Caves in Vietnam. Both of which have really horrible steps. These ones are actually really nicely carved out. <laughs> so I'm thankful for that at least. And there's basically shade everywhere we're walking. So I'm not going to complain too much. But this is a little tough doing this on the tail end of our trip. Okay. Halfway up Mount Sambangsan, it's already a pretty amazing view. Now, what you're seeing over there is Dragonhead Coast. That is the entrance to the coastline, and I really cannot see how that's gonna be that amazing compared to all the other coastlines that we've seen. So I'm already happy about the choice we made. Okay, oh, I can actually see the top. This is very far. Oh, this is the water. Sacred water, make your disease cure. Oh, really? No! Well, we are at the Fountain of Youth. I was actually expecting to be on the top of this mountain. What are you talking about? That's what I thought this was about, going to the top of the mountain, but uh, it's actually just a temple carved into the top of the ledge. But I do give mad kudos to the Buddhists who constructed this. The Buddhists really do deserve all the nice mountains in Korea. They're very diligent. She's drinking out of the Fountain of Youth over there. They actually have no English instructions here, but they say, I think, be respectful because this is Buddhist something. And they say, you should only take video and photos from under the steps. So it's pretty cool because you can see everything from here. If you look on the far right hand, that was the viewpoint. And then the tip right there, that's where we had ice cream on that cliffy area. And then we drove along the coast. And then you see that harbor right there, that is where I was dancing, the fisherman's dance. And then we drove up here, and here is Mount Sambangsan. So that midpoint viewpoint is actually the best one because you get a more panoramic view. But this is as high as you can go on this mountain. So walking down is super easy. <laughs> it's actually not that hard to go down. Okay, so from here, I also see that cliff over there. And if you remember from our previous day, on the other end of that cliff is where we saw the sunset. And I still think that's the most scenic sunset so far. Okay, so we are at the Buddhist temple on the bottom of this mountain. And actually, if you want to just see the temple, the entrance is free. I believe these are miniatures of famous monks. That's my guess. And this is the actual temple. So, main Buddha. I'm very curious why they have it in Thai though. They don't even have it in Chinese. By the way, you know, there's a, a lot of controversy lately about Dr. Seuss's pictures of Chinese people being racist. But Koreans are very proud of this picture that depicts Koreans. So I'm surprised Mai has never seen these birds, these black and white birds. Because 
Apparently, Japan has everything that Korea has, but they don't have gachi. Yeah! Well, if you see the Korean mail service, mail service. Yeah, they have a bird. That bird is a gachi. Yeah, gachi brings good news. If you hear gachi, because they have a very distinct sound, it's like a bringer of good news. Whereas a uh, crow, crow or raven, the all black one, that's considered to be bad luck if you hear that. Yeah. Okay, guys. So that wraps up our West Coast Jeju-do tour. <laughs> Completely exhausted, but I feel like we accomplished a lot. In hindsight, well, we had no choice, but if we could, we would do at least a week here. And there's so much to see, so much to do, so much to eat. We had to rush through so much that uh, we didn't really have time to chill and eat and whatnot. But hopefully, if you do come to Jeju-do, you can learn from what we did and pick and choose the perfect trip for you. Thanks again guys for checking out the video and I hope you enjoyed our Western Jeju guide. Remember to subscribe and check back with us however because we still have Eastern Jeju-do to cover and that's probably going to be another two-part series. And then before we head back to Seoul, we're going to cover all the sites at Seogipo, amazing waterfalls, things to eat. Whatever the case, I hope to see you guys next week for more vlogs about living and traveling in Asia. Okay, so before we take off, we sort of caved in to this halabong ice cream at the bottom of the mountain by the temple. We'll tell you how good it is. It's already looking sort of artificial though. How is it? It just looks like sherbet. Okay, really not worth the four dollars, but Everything tastes good when you're really thirsty. Okay, so in our hunt to find a good restaurant for tonight, something that's more local, away from the food street area that we are at, we ended up here at this bridge. Yeah, it's supposed to connect you to Sezom, like a small island. Maybe it's very good view. You can see the Rotki. <laughs> okay guys, so that's Sogipo out there. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay, so for dinner today, we searched around everywhere in Sogipo to find like the most happening meat place because I didn't quite like how the meat yesterday was frozen. It doesn't tell me that that's very fresh. So today, we try to find like a place that's happening because the more people there are, chances are it's going to be better meat because they're turning it over all the time. Anyways, this place is a little bit more expensive, but I think it's worth it. Like I can tell the quality of the meat is a lot better. What we got is Jeju black pig samgyeopsal and Jeju black pig neck meat. And I know it's got to be black pig because they're charging like an extra $4 because it's black, because they have a regular version that's just only $14, whereas the black pig version is $18 for 200 grams. Okay, so how is it compared to yesterday? Yesterday was chewier, I guess. This is softer. Huh. It's a lot softer, huh? Tender? Melts in your mouth? Oh, look at this dog. He's so cute. He's so nice. I think he's cold. So we're just making a quick dessert stop at the dumpling place to get red bean dumplings for dessert. What? It's not red bean mandu. Why don't they have red bean mandu? It's upside. Upside. They never have the one we want. 
What is it though? Eat it. Regular one. Just regular? Baby, you seem so pitiful right now. Wink.